This is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel London. We're in Hull today for the press conference for the show on the July the 13th here in Hull. Uh, headlined by Luke Campbell making his professional debut. Also fighting on the bill, Derry Matthews versus Tommy Cole. I've got Dave Caldwell with me who represents Derry Matthews. And who is this lovely young lady you're with, David, please? This is my introduce. little girl, Brooke Caldwell. All right, Brooke? Yeah. You all right? She's quiet, isn't she? She's very quiet. When she's, when, you know, when you stick a camera in her face, if it's not a photographic camera, then she's quiet. She's quite tall, Dad. Is it? She's quite tall. You're she's quite. She's got my jeans. <laughs> what can I say? Because I reckon, honestly, oh. I sent you outside. Another twelve months, I think you're going to be taller than Daddy. What do you reckon, Brooke? Uh, not quite. Not quite. No, I'll give it eighteen months. Eighteen yeah, months. Give it eighteen months. Then. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I, th I think she's going to be. I think she's going to be tall. She's. On, um, on Lou's side of the family, uh, there are one or two tall members, and I think she's got those side of jeans. All right, well, we'll see in 18 months, but yeah. I reckon she's going to be taller than you in 12 months. We'll see. <laughs> um, it's a huge fight this is turning into be, isn't it? Yeah. And we, we knew that from the start it yeah, would be. Right from the start. And the Twitter beef between the two <laughs> is, is exploding, isn't it? So, have you had a word with Derry about it? Or just to Listen, Derry's a big man. You know, he's, he's quite experienced on Twitter. Um, he's, he can play the game. You know, it's, it's a case of where uh, Tommy Coyle, he's, he's absolutely fantastic on Twitter. He, he doesn't, I don't know if he's only in, in his own little world or whatever, but he doesn't really care. He's, he's, he's rubbed up Curtis Woodhouse, he's rubbed up Derry Matthews, but it's, it's good for the game, it's good for the fans. You know, you don't want two guys that, that don't speak. You know, the whole point of, of, of fans being able to interact with, with boxers with people in the sport is they get a bit of entertainment out of it as well and you certainly get that with Tommy and you get that with Derry as well so you know if the fight's half as good as what the Twitter beef is it's going to be cracking yeah definitely I mean for the last sort of year to 18 months I mean Derry's been written off or yeah. even probably before that I was going to say yeah even before, before that, that yeah. but um, always people suggesting that he's, Derry should call it a day and retire he's and like Freddy Krueger you think he's done and he's coming back he does yeah so you know as long as he's got the desire to yeah you know, and, and the win against Anthony Crawler, uh, yeah. the first one, yeah. goes to show, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, definitely. And, and like I say, the thing about Derry is, is, is one of these, you know, there's real fighters out there, Derry, Curtis, what else, people like that. They, they don't get beat and think it's the end of the world and, and spit a dummy out and, and that's it. And, you know, they learn from it. You know, boxing, if you go through history and you look at all the, all the great fighters, you know, fighters used to fight every week and, and every other week and stuff like that. And they might win this week, lose next week, win the week after, but come through, still end up being champions. You know, that's how boxing used to be. And then I think television kind of bought into this where you've got to be unbeaten. Um, but then now it's come back round again where fans, you know, they're fed up of seeing um, a fight where they know who's going to win, you know, before you turn up. You can't beat a fight where you've got two guys in there you come there as a fan, as a promoter, as a manager, as a trainer, and you don't know which one's going to win. That's what boxing's about, and that's what grabs the public's attention, and that's what, what grabs the fans. You know, and people like Derry and, and, and Curtis as well, who's boxing on the same bill, you know, they get beat, pick themselves up, learn from it, move on, come back again, and that, you know, that's what Derry's done all the way through his career. It's always the thing, isn't it, when um, certain boxers don't face each other, it's quite easy to blame the boxer, but it's not always the boxer, is it? It's sometimes the politics that surround it, promoters involved. To be honest, yeah, yeah to, this, is, this is quite a difficult one because what people don't see is, is, yes, a lot of times promoters don't want to make them fights or managers don't want to make them fights, but a lot of times it's the trainers. You know, you make a, you make a fight for, with you know, a promoter and the manager, two camps, you agree on a fight, goes back to the trainer and the trainer turns around and tells the manager oh we don't want that fight you know and that's happening quite a lot and and, and a lot of promoters and managers out there will, will know what I'm saying on that respect you know they want to make the fights the fighter even might want to have the fight but the trainer turns around and says no and 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 a lot of times that's what stops a lot of fights and then of course you do get fights where the fighters don't want the fights it's not always about the promoters you know a lot, like I said a lot of times it is but you have to kind of like be a little bit fair here and, 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 and understand that, that you know that there's several reasons why fights don't happen sometimes. Um, did you watch Wingside on Thursday, Dave? I did. What did you see, Dave? Especially in the, the, the last third. Do you know what? I thought it was wicked. 
I thought you did really well on there. Yeah, yeah. It's nice, nice that you got a bit of um, publicity and, and and a bit of credibility for what you do. You know, is um, I thought I thought you'd done well on it, and you was you was scrubbed up pretty well as well. Not sure about the hairdo, but you know. What's wrong with the hairdo? Look a bit, you know. Don't be gel, Dave. As we say in Essex, don't be gel. Well, gel. Don't be gel. But no, it was good. It was yeah, good, well, and uh, really good. I know <coughs> this sort of means something more to you than because you, you haven't just stumbled upon iFilm London, no. you've sort of been with us from day one. Yeah. So, you know, I remember you getting us into our first sort of big press conference with David Hay in uh, Klitschko. Yep. And I remember going, you telling me it's all done, and I was going, well, really, you've got us in there? <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah, I do, I was yeah. Going, really, you've got us in there? You say it's done? And I was going, you're joking, David, you're joking, you've got us in there, it's done. Yeah. Just turn up at this time, and you're in. Yeah. So. Listen, this, this is what you get, at the end of the day, you graft. You know, it, myself, you know, a lot of people in the game, we graft away, we graft away. You graft away for years before people start realising. And, you know, then people just think that you've just popped up out of woodwork somewhere and, and, and here you are, you know. You, you've, you've worked hard at it and you've done well and you get around up and down at shows. You've given people like myself a lot of exposure and a lot of other promoters exposure. And a lot of a lot of the, the, the fighters, you know, that are coming through that, that wouldn't necessarily get the exposure. Um, so you know you've, you've done great for the sport, and, and it's nice that you got onto, onto ringside because obviously the, the the views and the uh, and the credibility that you're going to get from that's fantastic. All right, Dave. I think the press conference is just about to start, so uh, thank you very much for talking to us, no and uh, we we'll look forward to this press conference. It's going to be, I think it's going to be fiery, Dave. It could well be. And just a final word from Brooke. So would you like to sit in the main block? Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, um, <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favourite boxer, bro? My dad. Oh. She, do you know what the best... Boxer, Dave, she didn't even think about that. I know, I know. It's like she's been trained to say it. No, it's not at all. That's just, just, just genuine love coming out. She almost dad. said it before I'd finished the question. It's good. But Dad's my favourite boxer as well, especially when he had hair. Yes. <laughs> it's in them old clips. All right, Dave, thanks all very right, much for talking to us. Thanks, Thank you.